Wild Ghost of Tsushima, released in July 2020, is a video game set in the past. Perhaps it is unfair to label it a historical video game. While the game depicts the events of the invasion of Tsushima Island at the hands of Kublai Khan's Mongol Empire in 1274, these events were only ever intended to act as a jumping off point for a highly fictitious narrative. In a 2018 interview, the creative director for the game's developers, Seattle-based Sucker Punch Productions, claimed that the team were going to deviate from historical truth, but that they wanted to deviate intentionally rather than accidentally. Given that an American creative team were openly discussing an approach that would take liberties with another culture's history, many people were understandably concerned that Ghost of Tsushima would portray Japanese history in an insensitive or disrespectful manner. However, upon the game's release, many Japanese critics praised Ghost of Tsushima's depiction of Kamakura-era Japan, with Engadget Japan claiming that the game respected the period and did not feature many of the more embarrassing motifs that plague American representations of Japanese history. While many Japanese critics approve of Ghost of Tsushima's deviations from fact, these deviations are in fact numerous and egregious. First and foremost, the game's protagonist Jin Sakai did not exist in history. Not only did this fictional samurai not exist to liberate Tsushima from Mongol invaders, no real-life Japanese warriors liberated 13th century Tsushima. According to Professor of Japanese History Dr. Stephen Turnbull, a small force of 80 samurai were defeated at Komoda Beach by a fleet of 900 Mongol ships, housing some 8,000 soldiers. The Japanese forces were promptly defeated, and with the island conquered within a matter of days. While the doomed defence of Komoda Beach is featured in-game, what happens next deviates wildly from historical records. The game is predicated on the Mongols settling and defending Tsushima, whereas in reality the Mongolian fleet departed Tsushima Island less than a fortnight after they arrived. Moreover, maritime archaeologist James P. Delgado claims that the Mongol Empire's eventual defeat at Hakata Bay was not delivered by samurai warriors, but by the weather. He points to sources that say a great storm arose and many warships were dashed on the rocks and destroyed. In an interview with Variety, a spokesperson for Sucker Punch Productions acknowledged this deviation, saying that our hero isn't a hurricane, he's a man, and we're actually acknowledging that change with his sword that's engraved with storm wind designs. Grand historical changes being attributed to fictional or fictionalised characters is nothing new in pop culture. However, one does begin to wonder why Sucker Punch Productions chose the invasion of Sushim Ryland for their inspiration, when the actual events of 1274 bear so few similarities to the story they wanted to tell. This problem is compounded when one considers the development of samurai culture in Japanese history. Sucker Punch Productions clearly has a strong affinity for the work of Akira Kurosawa. Many of the scenes and characters in Ghost of Tsushima are inspired by his work, and the game even includes a Kurosawa filter that makes the game look more like a 1950s or 60s Japanese film. However, most of Kurosawa's more famous releases were set during the Sengoku period, and Ghost of Tsushima apes this aesthetic. The effect is to portray weapons, clothes and fighting techniques that are over 300 years ahead of what would have been seen in 1274. Paul O'Brien, an author and contemporary practitioner of Japanese martial arts, argues that many of the weapons available in the game were not present in Japan during the 13th century. The katana, so synonymous in the West with samurai, was not developed until the 14th century. Similarly, gunpowder, a crucial part of Jin's arsenal in Ghost of Tsushima, was not seen in Japan until the second Mongolian invasion of Japan in 1281. The disconnect between historical periods presented in Ghost of Tsushima is comparable to telling an alternate history of the Napoleonic Wars, but with tanks and nuclear weapons. O'Brien does, however, suggest that elements of the Western understanding of samurai culture were present in 1274. This is supported by Turnbull, who describes the Japanese disgust towards the Mongols' dishonourable battle strategies in a way that is very reminiscent to how the culture clash is depicted in the game. However, one feels that if Sucker Punch Productions wanted to tell a Kurosawa-inspired samurai story, they would have been better served setting their game in the Sengoku period. In trying to shoehorn the Western conception of samurai into the Kamakura era, they were forced to deviate significantly from historical fact. While Sucker Punch Productions may have made errors, accidental or otherwise, in their portrayal of 13th century Japan, the fact they chose to explore Japanese history in and of itself is interesting. Japanese sociologist Koichi Iwabuchi argues that Japan has attempted to export its culture and history as a form of soft power since its imperial heyday in the 1920s and 30s. The exportation of Japanese culture expanded under the leadership of Prime Minister Takeo Fukada in the 1970s, 
with the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs actively seeking to use Japanese pop culture to rehabilitate the nation's image after the damage it incurred during the Second World War. This approach was unique within Asia, and explains why countless Western films, television programs and video games depict Japan. Other Asian nations spent much of the latter half of the 20th century closed off from the West, and therefore they are rarely explored in Western pop culture. However, it must be acknowledged that some video games have depicted non-Japanese histories. The Chinese Romance of the Three Kingdoms provides the backdrop to the Dynasty Warriors series and a Total War strategy game, while Red Candle Games' Detention explores the White Terror in Taiwan. However, these examples are significantly outnumbered by releases focusing on Japanese history. The explosion of Japanese cultural exports following the 1970s led to the label Cool Japan, and the timing of this move would explain why many Western creatives who grew up in the 70s, 80s and 90s, such as the team at Sucker Punch Productions, have gravitated towards the culture and history of Japan. However, their depictions of Japan are coloured by the media that was exported to the West. Iwabuchi argues that the Japanese Foreign Ministry's involvement in the exportation of culture, starting with the popular television drama Oshin, but extending to many other works of fiction that cross genre and format, has allowed Japan to cultivate a particular view of its culture and history overseas. This perhaps explains the bizarre melding of the Kamakura and Sengoku eras seen in Ghost of Tsushima, which allows the creators to import Sengoku-era samurai aesthetics into an honourable underdog story of foreign invasion. It could also explain why Japanese critics were so full of praise for Ghost of Tsushima, which despite presenting a version of history that significantly deviates from the records, presents Japanese characters in a broadly positive light. At a time when Japan is reconciling with its imperialist past, it is perhaps understandable that this broadly positive portrayal of Japanese culture was embraced within Japan. While Ghost of Tsushima's portrayal of Japanese history and culture was generally accepted within Japan, whenever a Western creative takes liberties with Asian history, accusations of Orientalism will follow. This is not to say that it is universally unacceptable for foreigners to study or interpret the history of a different culture. In this video, I have mentioned several Western historians who have written excellent works on Japanese history. The real issue when exploring another country's history is treating it with respect and not patronising a foreign culture. An excellent way to avoid this is to use a co-productive approach. Co-production is a research methodology that seeks to engage stakeholders impacted by historians in order to add authenticity to their work. Within academic and commercial history, co-production is quickly becoming an important aspect of research. The subject of 2020's Gerald Aylmer seminar was co-production and collaboration in the archive. At this event, the speakers discussed various co-productive projects ranging from oral histories to archival projects that benefit people suffering from dementia. One of the speakers at the event summarised the approach to co-production in history by posing the question, who am I to make decisions about how people should tell their own history? Reading interviews with staff members at Sucker Punch Productions, it is clear that the team did use Japanese creative consultants when making Ghost of Tsushima. These Japanese consultants added authenticity to the game ensuring region-specific fauna and period-specific architecture appeared in-game, while ensuring the English-language dialogue was as authentic as it could be. Details like this could easily have been missed without co-production. However, it is a shame that Sucker Punch Productions did not involve Japanese historical consultants too, to ensure every detail of Ghost of Tsushima was accurate to the late 13th century. While Ghost of Tsushima ostensibly falls into the category of historical fiction, it is clear that its creators were never interested in being historically accurate. However, in the pursuit of their true ambition, creating a loving homage to the samurai films of the 20th century, they have exacerbated the ahistorical feedback loop first started by the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The true history of Japan is less important than the aesthetics and motifs of cool Japan, from yokai spirits to honourable warriors. Future generations may be inspired to explore Japanese history by Ghost of Tsushima, just as its creators were inspired by the films of Akira Kurosawa. However, without an appreciation for the facts, their work will never be an accurate depiction of feudal Japan. I hope this video has been entertaining and informative. If there are any questions, please leave a comment or reach out to me on Twitter. If you require assistance regarding academic writing, history lessons or English comprehension, you can find my tutoring profiles below.